Major League Cricket has recently partnered with GABA Sporting Products to bring the H3 hybrid cricket pitch to American cricket grounds. Here today, I have Major League Cricket's own Josh Dascom. Josh, thanks for taking the time to have a chat with me today about this exciting new product, basically. No, it's, it's great to great to finally be on the show, Nate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. I know you're a you're a regular consumer of of this of this uh, series, so I pre- appreciate you for uh, watching and your input when you give it. Everybody who knows you knows that you're like a Swiss Army knife with uh, Major League Cricket, and in fact, you're not the only one. There's a lot of people that work for Major League Cricket that that have their hands in so many different aspects of the league and of cricket in the USA. One of the things that you've been doing is installing these hybrid wickets around the USA. I believe you've had a hand in installing five of them so far. Um, yeah. yeah. And there's more coming in. How many more are coming in? And what is it like? How long does it take to install these? Yeah, no, great question. So we um, we installed we've installed two um, earlier in the in the spring of this year, I guess, as as pilots or as proof of concepts. Um, one of those is in the Bay Area in Morgan Hill. The other one is at Prairie View Cricket Complex. And we've learned we learned a lot out of doing those two. Um, and then the next three that have gone in over the course of the summer, uh, we have two of them at uh, ACAC Park in St. Louis, the home of the St. Louis Americans. And then the most recent one that we just completed uh, two weeks ago was in uh, South Eldon in Chicago, just outside of Chicago. Is this um, like a week long process? Is it, you know, it- yeah, no, so the installation process, um, there, there's a couple of elements to it. Um, so the first one, I guess, is is the concrete base being in there. And that is just the same concrete base that you would install if you're installing a, a normal artificial wicket that we're familiar with in this country. Uh, so in the case of Prairie View uh, and Morgan Hill, those were already installed as they were existing artificial wickets. Um, But there's the period of of installation of the concrete. That then takes about two weeks to cure. And then from there, the installation process of the wicket is really a two to three day process. Um, And then what we found is very beneficial is then spending another two to three days working with the local um, community, the local cricketing community to upskill them on the preparation process. Uh, and then from there, they have the skills and the knowledge to be able to uh, prepare it week in, week out. Right. And that preparation, one of the benefits of the appeal of the hybrid wicket is that it doesn't take as much to maintain as a turf wicket. It doesn't cost as much. What exactly is a hybrid pitch, a hybrid cr- hybrid cricket pitch? And what is the H3 hybrid cricket pitch? You know, I know there's various kinds of hybrid out there. What is this particular kind of hybrid? Yeah, sure. So there's two predominant players in the market in terms of hybrid cricket pitches at the moment. One of them operates um, as, I guess, a supplement to an existing turf wicket where they sew artificial fibres into the natural turf wicket block with the main view of it still predominantly being a turf wicket, but being more durable as a result of having artificial about 10 5 to 10 percent of artificial grass threaded through the the natural turf wicket the h3 product that we've looked at so we looked at that product we also looked at the h3 product and we ultimately landed on the h3 product for a few reasons the first one is that it is a um, high quality synthetic grass about the length of what we are familiar with here in the u.s as being used for soccer fields or for for artificial football fields. So that Mm -hmm. kind of length of artificial strand grass that's then brushed upright and filled with the clay that you would find in a natural turf wicket. So you've got the combination of um, high quality synthetic grass and natural soil, which combines to form, I guess, something that we feel is uh, quite realistic to a natural turf pitch. Sure, sure. And because it's clay or, or you know, the, the, you know, the clay is on top of the mat, which it would in the fibers come through the clay, mm. that clay, I, I imagine, just like it would on a regular pitch cracks up and breaks up and stuff and needs to be rolled, I imagine, to be smoothed out. So with it having the the concrete base underneath it, the cement base, 
I imagine you can't roll a very heavy roller. There's there's probably no need to really have a terribly heavy roller. Uh, would I be correct? Yeah. So it's um, I mean, you do still need a roller, um, and you uh, definitely still need to compact the clay. But you're right in that it it doesn't. I guess the the main quality that of of a hybrid wicket and the benefit of it in this country that we see is that you take the science and the some elements of the science and the luck out of growing natural grass. And you're really just left with a clay base that you need to water. You need to roll for a little bit. Right. And then you've got a lot of the similar characteristics of a hybrid wicket uh, of a natural turf wicket. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Tim Cutler, Vanuatu CEO, also one of the founders of Emerging Cricket on the Emerging Cricket podcast. Um, he he raves about the product. Uh, we we talk about it a lot. We have talked about it a lot on the Emerging Cricket podcast for years. It's I was introduced to it listening to the Emerging Cricket podcast, uh, introduced to the idea and how that could be a solution for uh, associate members that don't have very large budgets because you, as you know, it's incredibly expensive to man manage and maintain a turf square. Uh, so originally. You know, a lot of people wanted to see all minor league cricket games played on on turf, on on real grass turf. We don't have that infrastructure in the USA at at present. We don't have a lot of privately run owned grounds that that can do that, that can sustain that, like Saki does with Musa Stadium. And a lot of the grounds are public. They're they're leased from from uh, the public sector, uh, from towns and municipalities, and so. You know, you have to have a really great relationship in order to get turf in your town at your town ground, you know, at your city's ground. You have to have a tremendous relationship uh, and both parties probably have to put in a lot of money to make that happen. So this is obviously a great solution in that in that regard. And it makes sense why you would choose this instead of the kind that stitches into an already existing cricket pitch. Yeah, no, without a doubt. I mean, when we sat down and, and looked at this and, and we we had a few early hiccups and, and learnings that I think were really important in the process. When we set out on the journey of, I guess, minor league cricket, we we very quickly, as you pointed out, wanted to make sure that all of the games were played on turf as quickly as possible. Right. And what became apparent as we started to get down this process is that, yes, you know, it's it's easy, it's relatively easy to go and construct a turf wicket block. The challenge comes in what happens next. Yeah. Who is maintaining the turf wicket block? Do we have the equipment? Is the weather conducive in that part of the country to be able to maintain a natural turf wicket? Right. But that's when we started to, I guess, think a little bit more um, out of the box, I guess, mm -hmm. in terms of the challenges and, and come up with a, a bridge between where we are today in terms of the development of cricket in this country. And yes, in five, 10, 15 years we need to have turf wickets all over the place we need to have turf wickets all over the country but right, right now at this point in time we need something that's a bridge from where we are today in terms of the cricket infrastructure in this country and where we need to get to in five to ten years and i think this hybrid serves a really important role in being that bridge because there's not as much expertise required to maintain it and prepare it on a week in week out basis and there's not as much upfront capital required to construct and then maintain the turf wicket. So I think it's um, it's not a replacement for turf in the long run, but it's a great bridge from where we are now to where we need to get to. Absolutely. And as cricket becomes more popular in the USA, gets more funding, <clears throat> obviously you can take that next step, the final step of having more for turf wickets we are a massive country like there are 26 teams in minor league cricket that is an awful lot of teams in one league that's just minor league cricket obviously we have major league cricket to come but that's that's an awful lot of teams for one cricket league if you look throughout the, the world it uh that's that's a very big big league so in order for us to have i mean if we had 30 26 turf grounds i mean there aren't many associate nations that have that many in their entire country. You know, I I probably there aren't any associate nations that have that many in their entire country. So it's not entirely necessary that, that we do that. So this is a, I, in my opinion a great transition. It's a good use of money too. Um like you said it's easier 
with it being easier to maintain, uh, it just seems to make so much sense to me. I was very excited to hear that you guys were going this route. Um, and then you did the Altius on the one at Morgan Hill. You played the Altius 50 overs tournament in the spring there. And that seemed to go pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. So we've we've had the the 50 over Super League here in the Bay Area that was played on the hybrids. And then we played a few of the matches this year in the minor league uh, mm -hmm. in round seven of the season um, on the on the hybrid wicket as well. And we had some great feedback from the players who are ultimately the ones that are using it. I mean, right. to be able to talk to the guys from Seattle and San Diego who've played on artificial wickets, they've played on turf wickets that may have been slightly underdone right? in terms of their preparation. And they, the feedback that we got from them was positive, was really positive. The, the feedback from the players was that, you know, it didn't feel like playing on concrete. Mm -hmm. It did, it, it did, um, I guess, um, provide some of the characteristics of a nat natural turf pitch, whether it's seam, whether it's spin, whether it's pace and bounce. Um, so it felt more realistic to them, but it was also, um, I guess, better than playing on a, a an underprepared turf wicket. So that was really positive. The scores reflected that as well. You know, we had some high-scoring minor league games. We had some high-scoring 50-over games in the Super League. So right. I think the... The feedback and, and you know that there, there have been some challenges in certain places as well. Um, but I think overall, when um, prepared correctly, it's uh it's definitely a, a step forward. Right. They, yeah, it's exciting. Um, there's an awful lot of cricket played in the Bay Area at that Morgan Hill uh, gr facility. You know, you have the turf, you have the turf uh, pitch on one side, and then you have now the hybrid. But my buddy Dinesh down in uh, Trinidad and Tobago was wondering how long you can expect a, a, a hybrid wicket, especially particularly this H3, to hold up. How many years will that particular wicket have to hold up or how much time would that have to would that be able to hold up under heavy regular use? Yeah, I'll answer the question in two two parts. So in terms of the week to week use. What we found is that with a little bit of maintenance day to day, maybe, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour, it can probably hold up and be played on for five to six days before you need to flood it again and then recommence the preparation process. In terms of the longevity of the, the, the wicket itself, it's the type of wicket that, I mean, we're not really at a stage where we're getting to the end of where we've seen any um, where? deteriorate with, with uh, you know, sufficient um, at a sufficient rate to warrant them be replaced. But, you know, in our conversations with Gabba, they've kind of told us that, you know, there'll be maintenance required year to year in terms of topping up the clay, but the actual fibers should hold for seven to 10 years. Well, that's really impressive. Yeah, that's excellent. That's uh. That's great. So there you go, Dinesh. There's your answer to that. Uh, so that you even have people in the Caribbean looking at this this as an alternative to you know spending a ton of money on a turf wicket. It's uh, it's just yeah, I think it's such a good thing for the growth of the game. Uh, you know, it's not it's it's tough to judge as we've talked about so many times, especially the first couple of years of minor league, the first um season and the exhibition season of minor league cricket. The stat differences, the the statistical differences between playing on a on a Astro wicket and uh, or a mat a jute mat and a in a in a uh, turf wicket, you know, it, it's just it's tough to judge how good a player is, and you need you need that you need to have something that's going to challenge the batters. It's not going to just cause you know create bad habits because we know bad habits are often created uh, on Astro turf. We've seen firsthand that happen with a lot of good players who are national national level players who go on and play too much uh cricket on astroturf and they get into some bad habits so this is a great way to avoid that i think it's um i mean cricket is inherently a sport where there's so many variables from match to match you know whether it's the the field size whether it's the the speed of the outfield whether it's the opposition that you're facing on any given day so the more right, that you right. can um take out those variables and you know the, the difference between matting and artificial wickets and turf wickets is, is a big variable. So the right. more that you can remove that, I guess the more relative 
uh, you are able to to judge performance and and um, I, I think that that's going to be a big step forward for the minor league. So as you can see, I'm wearing a Philadelphians hat. But uh, one of the things I loved about the Philadelphians is how they were able to get players, uh, fans to come out to watch their players, um, you know, at a ground that's not not a cricket specific ground, you know. And I know that they have plans to develop their grounds, obviously, with with this so many hybrid wickets coming in. You got to expect Philadelphia's uh, going to get one as well. That this this is to me the most exciting thing about it is how this this should benefit the Northeast, which we know it doesn't have they don't have a, a turf wicket anywhere. You know, you go north of uh, north of well, you, there's a couple in Maryland at, at the <laughs> racetrack, I believe, but I don't know how often they're used and I don't know about their quality. But if you go north of Church Street Park, it's pretty much barren as far as uh, turf goes. No, absolutely. I think this is, and, and once again, um, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but this is a a great solution for parts of the country where weather presents a challenge because that's another thing that you need yeah. as part of a turf wicket. So um, I think it's a really great uh, opportunity to increase the standard of services that, that teams play on in the northeast of the country, the, the Midwest, um, even in a place like Seattle where you have such a, a long wet season, yeah, right across essentially that northern belt of the U.S. I think this is, presents an amazing opportunity to, I guess, um, increase the time period during which um, cricketers are able to play on more realistic turf-like surfaces. Sure, sure. Especially even in the southeast where we actually get more rain in the su- in the summer than anywhere in the country, as we as we see every year with so many you know, with rain threatening so many weekends of minor league play and minor league being a weekend, be, being a weekend league, basically, uh, it's absolutely acceptable that you can, you could, like you said, you can play up to five, six days, and then you have to start the preparation again. Well, you're never going to have to worry about that with minor league cricket when you're ha- going to have games, maybe Friday, Saturday, definitely Saturday and Sunday, and maybe Monday, you know, that, that gives you plenty, you know, it, we've seen church street park get a lot more used than, than what than what these are going to get uh for the most part and Dirk mm-hmm. Tree Park held up so you know that these these uh yeah. hybrids are going to hold up great Dave Agnew this is this is also incredibly exciting this is one of my favorite topics that, that we've had I love talking about the hybrids and I love talking about Dave Agnew so um <laughs> he's just recently been hired as the MLC head groundskeeper so let's talk about what a gem of a human being Dave Agnew is and a little bit about his resume coming into Major League Cricket. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how he'd feel about you calling him a groundskeeper. Uh, it, it's a it's a pitch curator, but I'm... we'll let that we'll let that one. Fly. I won't tell him you said that. No, we're we're ecstatic to have Dave. Sorry, head curator. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> Baseball uh, coming no, through again. You know, <laughs> we're ecstatic to uh, we're ecstatic to have Dave on board as part of our team. Um, at Major League Cricket, and I think it's going to have a massive impact um, as we look forward to some of the things that are coming in 2023 and beyond. To have someone with his experience, uh, not just, I guess, in pitch preparation, but in pitch preparation in North America. Uh, He's worked at the CPL for a number of years. He's worked at the Global T20 Tournament in Canada. He's worked in the U.S., so yeah. it's, it's great to have someone of his expertise and of his caliber and also someone of his work ethic right. on our staff here at Major League Cricket. And, you know, he's he's in Dallas at the moment overseeing the construction of that wicket block at Grand Prairie and, you know, look forward to, to seeing what he's able to do at that venue. Yeah, and for those who don't know, he play, he has played a huge role at Church Street Parks uh, development and, and it becoming the quality that it is today. He came here first in 2018 before the uh, ICC Americas uh, qualifier and prepared the pitch. I remember seeing him there all the time. He was there every day. Of course, he we had I had a great time hanging out with him. I actually, took him to his first ice hockey game. Um, but yeah, he 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 made he made Church Street Park. He took it from a amazing ground and made it even better. Uh, he, he's taught Pat, the current curator there. He's taught him. Um, Pat's done an amazing job under his tutelage. Yeah, Dave is just a really friendly guy. He wants the game to get better. He doesn't protect his secrets. 
he shares information with people. You know, this is exactly the type of person you want to have at the top when you're talking about top groundskeeper in Major League Cricket. And obviously in the future, he'll be overseeing, I guess, several more grounds, hopefully several more Dallases. Um, uh, but that's, nice. that's exciting. Is it- and and what you mentioned there, I think, is one of the reasons that he's such a great fit for where we are at as a, I guess, as a, as a cricketing nation. You know, the more that people like him are able to get out and meet meet new people, meet new communities, and pass on the knowledge that he's developed throughout his career, that's that's going to be immeasurable. Um, even for something like preparing a hybrid pitch, is sure. going to be immensely uh, useful in terms of increasing the quality of surfaces that we have here in the US. So no, ecstatic to have him here. It's funny, we were um, a little bit apprehensive about telling the town of Morrisville that uh, we'd hired him because (laughs) we we didn't know whether they would take, they would be ecstatic that he's going to be here more often or they were going to be disappointed because it meant that he was going to be working for us and wouldn't necessarily be available to them. but no, we we've got plans for for Dave to I guess um, assist all of the turf grounds around the country, right? Um, to to improve the the standard of surfaces. So it's great to have him on board. Yeah, I think that you know, like I I mentioned Pat earlier, Pat's done such a good job that that I think here in Church Street Park we're happy. Everybody's just happy he's in the U.S. right now, and we'll get to see him for sure. It's a, it's he's a great guy. He's worked extensively. He worked at Seddon Park. He, like you mentioned, the GT20 CPL. One of the most impressive things I've seen him do was when the year that the GT20 was at Brampton. He basically showed up to a big grassy field and turned it into a cricket ground in yeah. just a few, in just like, well, probably 10 weeks or so. So now he's going to be helping develop Dallas. We know that turf wickets take a long time to to get into an ideal situation, you know. But if there's if anybody can speed up that process it's absolutely dave so right place right man for the right job if you ask me so you guys are are uh batting a thousand hiring people right now you, you first you could bring in zubin and now you got dave agnew this is uh this is great stuff no it's great to great to build out our team more and and you know the the quality of the people that you work with are one of the most important things in any organization so it's it's great to have them as on board and part of the team yeah, no doubt. So, Major League Cricket, you're basically, this is something that you got to probably pinch yourself and remind yourself about every once in a while, because I know you're really busy, um, and it probably feels like you're, you know, you're losing your mind half the time, but you're involved in creating a brand new league in the USA, uh, Major League Cricket. This is, uh, it's it's massive. It's a, it's a huge undertaking. You know, you're, 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 building bridges for the future, uh, you know, for cricket in this country. And uh, how does it feel to be involved in such a trailblazing, you know, project like this? It's a great question. Um, I'd be lying if I said it's not incredibly exciting. Um, You know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be here for over two and a half years now and see the journey from where, we were when I first started to, I guess now, you know, nine months out from launching a professional league. Um, you know, I think it's really important to us that we're um, creating a product for America um, and that's going to succeed in America and engage the existing fans of the sport here in this country, but also create a vehicle to attract new fans. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's there's so much work to be done, um, but at the same time, it, it's something that I see as the opportunity to build something that'll outlast, hopefully outlast me, and and contribute to a change in the sport of cricket across the world. Yeah, it certainly has that potential. I think a lot of people have t- talked about the potential that cricket. If cricket catches on in the USA, the potential good it can do throughout the, the entire world, how it can change the face of cricket throughout the entire world. And, you know, when when people complain to me about like Americanizing cricket, you know, they'll see they'll look at like a T10 league somewhere or something like that. Oh, cricket's becoming Americanized. I'm like, actually, it's not. If only it could become Americanized, 
it would be a better thing. You know, we we tend to have really good sports leagues here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Only the only what the four or five of the biggest out of the top ten in the world. So yeah. No, it's it's um it's awesome to be able to, I guess, take a sport that is is so well followed and passionately followed around the world and be able to combine things that America does fantastically with their sports leagues with right. a sport that I grew up loving and I'm passionate about and see so much and you know the word potential gets thrown around so much but you know the truly the immense amount of potential for the growth of cricket in the country and what it can do for the sport globally I think is is an opportunity that's exciting to be involved in yeah 100 percent. i'm i'm thrilled about it i think about it sometimes how next just you know we're less than a year away from the launch of major league cricket i, I get so excited when i think think about that and when i think about the players that we've been following in minor league cricket them on a bigger stage you know finally getting a chance to to shine and to actually you know uh make more money have a career you know in, in, with cricket this is all such exciting things. You know, I think about guys like Amin Patel in the future doing commentary for Major League Cricket. And it's just, it's, it's like we're on the ground floor watching something really exciting happening. And I think in a, a year's time from now, we'll be we'll be looking at, at this. And maybe you can take a deep breath and you can like, you know, exhale a little bit and enjoy <laughs> enjoy the future, fruits of everybody's labor, you know? I have to say, I might be on holiday. I might be on holiday <laughs> somewhere <laughs> night, dude. <laughs> no it's right. uh, very exciting yeah so one more question if you could pick any cricketer in the world to play in major league cricket so this probably puts you on the spot more than more than people might think but uh if you could pick any cricketer in the world to play in major league cricket who would it be and what's the reason okay can, can i ask a clarifying question yeah can they be indian Yes, absolutely. The only thing is they can't have, they can't have played in minor league cricket. They have to be a new person. Okay. Yeah. Because obviously, obviously, at the moment, Indian players aren't allowed to play in any foreign league. So I'll give you, t- I'll give you a two prompt answer then. Give me two. Give me two. I think yeah, the I mean... first one um, is Hardik Pandya. Ah, awesome. Love that. Yeah. For for not just what he can do on the field, but I guess the um the personality and the um charisma and the the characteristics that he brings that are so well loved within US sport. Sure. You know, um the the bling, the the swag, all that kind of stuff. That what he brings will resonate with American fans. And obviously he's one of the best T20 players in the world. So that if I had unlimited access to any player, I think it would be him. Uh which is going to lead into my next answer, which is probably something uh, that you wouldn't necessarily expect. But if I look at at someone like a uh, Marcus Stoinis, ah, yeah. I think yeah. he brings that same character and personality, whilst also being, you know, one of the biggest stars of of T Twenty cricket around the world. So yeah. I think those those two guys uh athletic um you know world-class cricketers and have the the personality and the charisma that will i guess create uh engagement with american sports fans yeah that's that's an interesting pick obviously you get him you you got to bring zampa over too you can't love cafe the u.s (laughs) the u.s chapter of the love cafe (laughs) can't split them up so uh, that'd be cool to see that happen. Actually, I, I was kind of, you know, I was I was curious what you would say. I was maybe thinking you might say Pat Cummins or Rashid Khan or something. But that's that's a really good good choice. It would be cool to have uh, Stoinis uh, here as well. Let's just get all of them. How about that? You, that's uh, that's your task right now. There you go. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, great talking to you, Josh. I appreciate you taking the time here um, to chat with me about this exciting new h3 wicket and um i'm sure it's going to bring great things no fantastic thanks for the time mate